Yeah, we're not enthused about gold. It, um, people historically have felt that was the first refuge from a, a currency that was going to be um, decline in value. But, you know, so is a barrel of oil, so is an acre of land, so is a piece of, of, uh, of Coca-Cola, so is, so is C's candy. C's candy, if the dollar goes down 50 percent, we will be selling C's candy for double at the present price. We'll be, we'll be getting the same real price for C's candy. People will work the same number of minutes or hours per week in order to buy a pound or a two-pound box of the candy. So we, we, we would much prefer a some asset that is going to be useful whether the currency is worth what it is today or or 10 percent of what it is today or whether people are using seashells in order to transact business because people will go on eating and they'll go on drinking and doing various things and and their preferences will translate in real dollars uh, into more or less the same economics for us and we would not trade the ownership of those kind of assets for, for, for a hunk of yellow metal, which has very little real utility except for people who are looking to uh, uh, flee from the dollar and, 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 in our view, really haven't thought through the consequences of what fleeing would, uh, where they should flee. Charlie? Yeah, if you have the opportunities of Berkshire Hathaway, averaged out gold is a dumb investment. My dad was a huge gold enthusiast, so I, I, I sat around the dinner table. My two sisters are here, too. They will testify to it. We sat around listening to the virtues of gold, and that was in, we'll say, 1940. And gold at that time uh, was $35 an ounce, and we would have had some storage and insurance costs. And, you know, here it is, 65 years later, world wars, nuclear bombs, all kinds of things. And... Uh, the compound rate from $35 to a little over $400, less those expenses, is not something that causes me to salivate. Um.